Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learn something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. Right, so following on from our lesson of completing the square, we're gonna look at transformation of functions and how quadratics, completing the square, and transformations all link together. So, in the previous lesson, we looked at completing the square. Now we wanna observe how this relates to sketching quadratics. From GCSEs, you should be aware that if I give you a function of the form f of x minus 2 plus 3, then the f of x minus 2 will shift any graph to the right by 2. Because remember, the x minus 2 refers to the inputs of a function, and it always does the opposite of what it says. So x minus 2 actually means adding 2 to the x values. Then the plus 3 on the outside looks at the y values, and you're adding 3 to all the y values, which will shift the graph up by 3. Now we want to see how this links to f of x equals x squared. So if f of x is x squared, write down expressions for f of x minus 2. So we're thinking about input. So f of x, the input x, if you input x into a function, all it will do is square that function. So if we change that input to x minus 2, then our function will square that. So we're going to square x minus 2. Make sure you use a bracket. f of x plus 3. Now f of x is just x squared. So we get x squared plus 3. And finally, we have f of x minus 2 plus 3. We wrote down that f of x minus 2 is x minus 2 squared. And then we have the plus 3 at the end. Now what do you notice about the last one? What you should notice is that it is a quadratic in its completed square form, or a more obvious completed square form. In fact, the first one is in completed square. This one is two. But in terms of the process of completing the square, the last one is a more traditional form that we always see. So actually, if we do have a quadratic in its completed square form, we can just observe its transformations of the original x squared graph. So the x minus 2 squared, all I'm thinking about is I'm taking the original x squared graph and I'm moving it to the right by 2, and then I'm moving it up by 3. So what we want to do is we want to observe different forms of completed squares and then know what transformations of the x squared graph we have to make. So x minus 1 squared plus 2. The x minus 1 means that we'll be moving the graph to the right by 1 and then up by 2. We always want to address the inputs first. x plus 2 squared minus 5. So the x plus 2 will shift the graph to the left by 2. It's doing the opposite, remember? And then the minus 5, that does as it says, we're going to move down by 5. Negative of x plus 3 squared. Now this one's slightly different, but the x plus 3 squared is still going to be shifting to the left by 3. Then it's what does the minus do? Now the minus in front of any function, because in terms of this example, if we're talking about the x squared graph, it would be f of x plus 3. All that's happened is we put a minus in the front. Now if the minus is in front of the f, it means we're multiplying the y values by minus 1, which technically means if the graph is on the top side of the x-axis, which turns it by minus 1, it's a reflection in the x-axis. So a reflection in x. Yeah? Next one. Minus x plus 3 squared plus 2. So the x plus 3 squared we're moving to the left by 3. Then the minus on the outside means we're going to reflect on the x-axis. Then the plus 2 is still going to move us up by 2. X might, so it says 4 minus x minus 2 squared, but we read the x minus 2 bit first. So the x minus 2 is going to shift us to the right by 2. The negative in front reflects in the x-axis. Then this 4 at the end always affects the y values. It's going to shift the graph up by 4. So it doesn't say the plus in the front, but the plus here is implied. We don't need to write it. 3 plus 2, x minus 1 squared. 
So the x minus 1 squared is going to shift us to the right by 1. Now the 2 in the front, what is that going to do? Similar to before, so the x minus 1 squared would look like this. But then there's a 2 at the front. All that's doing is it's going to multiply all the y values by 2, which basically means a stretch by a scale factor of 2. Yeah? And for that, I'm just going to say multiply the y's by 2. But the technical term is we're stretching by a scale factor of 2 on the y-axis. Then finally, we're going to move it up by 3. Last one. All the combinations. So x plus 1 squared means we're going to move to the left by 1. The 2 at the front means we're going to times all the y's by 2, yeah, which is a stretch by scale factor 2 on the y-axis. The minus means we're going to reflect on the x-axis. And then that 3 means we're going to move the graph up by 3. So let's see how this works practically. So transformations to sketch quadratic. So sketch y equals x minus 1 squared plus 2. So for the first bit, I'm going to do like my general sketch, my transformations, and then I'm going to draw my final image. So remember, these are all just transformations of the x squared graph. I'm just going to do it in a dotted. Now, x minus 1, we said it's going to shift to the right by 1. So we're going to go to the right by 1. Then that 2 is going to shift it up by 2. So overall, on our final picture, it's going to look like this. So we have 1 here, and then we have 2. Now this is interesting because remember at GCSEs, you learned that when you complete the square, you can find the turning point by doing the negative of the number inside the bracket, comma, the number on the outside of the bracket. And that's because of the transformations. Look, the 1 moved it to the right, so the x coordinate here is 1. And then we moved it up by 2, so the y coordinate here is 2. So you can see now why in GCSE that was the case. Now just to make sure things look proper, is always work out where it crosses the y-axis, just to make sure. And you'll see why this makes sense in other examples. But the quick way to do that is you just make x equals 0. So we get 0 minus 1 squared plus 2. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. When you square that, you get 1. When you add 2, you get 3. So that's a nice little sketch of our quadratic. The next one, we've got our x squared graph. Now x plus 3 is going to shift it to the left. So it'll be at minus 3 now. Then the minus, remember, reflects in the x-axis. So it's going to go upside down. And then it's going to move up by 2. For this sketch, don't worry so much about the y set. So here, we will need to work out where that is because say this is minus 2. When it goes up, it could cross the, the intersection of the axes. It could go above or below. So we'll work that out in a second. But essentially, it's moving up by 2. So in our general sketch, we can kind of just do whatever. So the main thing is that it's at minus 3, 2, the turning point. But we do want to work out its y intercept. So subbing in x is 0, we get the negative of 0 plus 3 squared plus 2. Yeah? Move my head a little bit. So we get the negative of 3 squared, which is minus 9, plus 2. That is minus 7. So this graph crosses the y-axis at minus 7. And then it has that turning point at minus 3. Two. So our general sketch will look something like this. And this is the quickest way to sketch quadratics. And we could also find the roots if we want. But here for A levels, you know, we don't have to do full, full sketches like GCSE. We only need the key, you know, the key things on the graph to be able to just do a general sketch to then do other calculations that are interesting to us. Right guys, so that's it. So today this was just part one of sketching quadratics. Stay tuned for part two, where we're going to look at some more difficult examples and also do a full sketch, including the roots, and we'll combine it with completing the square as well. If you like the video, 
then please consider subscribing and hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.